Right, my car's in the garage at the moment. So what we have here is a hairdresser's car. Fiat 500. Look at that. White dash, isn't it lovely? Anyway, but what we also have in here is these. We'll get to those in a second. Anybody who's not new to my channel is probably more into machines than me moaning. Um, now, what we've got here is the cross slide setup for the cross table setup, in fact, for a small French uh, toolmaker's lathe. It's an ARE, it's not very big. Um, it's got what nine centimeters travel either way. It's a nice little piece of equipment. Um, it's fairly high precision. Uh, it's you know, to the hundredth and all the rest of it. It's really nice on the uh, on the compound because I've already scraped the compound. But uh, on the cross slide, it's not. It's not nice at all. It needs quite a lot of work. So what we're going to be doing over the winter is. That's part of part of the winter. It's not going to take very long. Um, is to rescrape probably entirely this entire cross slide setup. Now, rescraping is not too hard. It's cast iron. It's a it's a job that can be done on, on a tool that's this small. It can be done by hand, uh, which is the way that I do it. I don't have a power scraper, um, although I am looking out for a tool that can be used to. Um, to be bastardised into a power scraper because it would be quite handy. Anyway, uh, that's uh, that's by the by. I'm going to be scraping this by hand, and part of the scraping process, you you blue stuff up, you scrape it, and then you have to take the burrs off before you can re blue stuff up. And to take the burrs off, what is used is what's known as a um, precision ground bench stone. And you could just use an oil stone. But oil stones aren't particularly flat, especially if they've been used for sharpening stuff. So you're taking more more material off one side than another, and, or one spot than another, and it's, it's not conducive to precision work. This is a precision tool, you know, hundredth of a millimetre and all the rest of it. Um, so what we use is what's known as a precision ground bench stone. A precision ground bench stone is many things, but one of them is eye-wateringly expensive. Um, they are really, really expensive. They come in pairs. They are ground flat to within an inch of their lives, not to within a micron of their lives, probably. Um, and best, they are extremely expensive. And because they're extremely expensive and I am extremely cheap, I don't have one. But I do have the money for one of these. Well, two of these, three of these, and you can probably guess where this is going. Um, these came from the pound shop. Um, they were well, the pound shop. It's not a pound shop over here, is it? Because it's because uh, we're in euros. They cost me one euro each. Um, you have absolutely no right to expect them to be anywhere close to flat. Um, they are a bit coarse for what I'm using, what I'm wanting. They're 12240 apparently. Normally a precision stone would be yeah 500 something like that. But three euros as opposed to eye-wateringly expensive. We can live with that. And what we're going to do is we are going to use. That nice Mr. Whitworth's three flats method to make them flat. So the stones are removed from their packaging. They're not marked. The dark side, which I don't know if you can make that out. Can we see that even? Yeah, we can see that. Uh, the dark side is the less coarse side. So it's dark side up, dark side up dark side up and on the face of it they don't actually look that bad they're a bit chipped no big deal um, and we can tell if they're flat by putting them face to face oh that's not very flat 
There's a nice fat gap there. What, what happens if we go this way? Oh, here we have rockability. So that one's definitely domed by the looks of it. Might be, it's probably not far off being flat to that one. So, my stones, not flat. That's, you know, about what we would expect. And I suspect if I was to take this one, dark side up, and rub this one a dark side up against it. Yeah, we see we're only contacting in the corners. So we've marked them, bit of paint marker, A, B, and C. And now I am going to move into some stop motion stuff. I'm going to scrape these by hand. Or scrape them. I'm going to lap them against each other by hand. So, as you can see, uh, that went quite fast. Uh, we now have three stones. I haven't gone through a wet cycle on them. But they now marry up to each other very very well indeed uh, the surface finish isn't all that but flatness is great so I'm actually going to do the other sides as well just for the, just for shits and giggles um, this is something you don't you know you don't need to take an enormous amount of time with and you don't need any abrasive on these because because uh, they are abrasive so I'm going to do the other sides and I'll come back in a second. That took me about four minutes. So hopefully this is going to come out. What we have? He sits against B. Mm, not perfect, but it's not far off. B sits against C. Lovely. On the other side, B sits against C, lovely. B sits against A, lovely. A against C, lovely. A against C, lovely. So, minimal work, minimal effort, three very flat stones you now I need to make up a little box to put them in so they don't get chipped but uh, yeah there you go that's uh, something I should have done earlier and it was triggered by just seeing these at one euro a piece anybody can do this it's uh, really quick and easy and uh, there's no excuse so enjoy that